I would think that it could tend to be isolating. You're in a classroom with children all day long, and if you aren't receiving feedback from other peers on what you're doing and ways to improve, how are you expected to gauge your own performance? In order to have a highly effective organization, district, school district, you need to be made up of highly effective, highly successful teachers. Performance-based reviews, encouraging people in professional development, not only keeps them engaged, keeps them excited, and that's just going to spill over to the kids. The prior system, particularly for teachers that had been teaching for a number of years, um, principals were not not even required to do any type of classroom observation. Now with this one, all teachers have at least four opportunities for uh, an appraiser to observe them. On the previous uh, appraisal system, I probably would not observe any teachers this early in the year, if I was honest. It's November 1st. I have 19 appraises. I have observed 14 of them. I'm guessing midweek next week, I'll be done with all 19. From 7.45 to 2.45 every day, that's instructional time, it's sacred, it's intentional. A lot of the non-instructional tasks that happen throughout the day, I have a support system around me. They're able to handle those things. You must organize yourself if you're to complete these observations and provide relevant and meaningful feedback in a timely fashion. And now with the TDS, TDS are also coming into the room and observing and giving feedback. The teacher development specialist really helps me because I love the constructive feedback. I mean, if you're not learning and you're not changing, then you're probably not a very effective teacher. The teachers are the ones who are doing the work. The teachers are in the trenches. The teachers are the ones bearing the heavy load, and therefore they need our support. And just to have that second set of eyes who have been in the business for a long time helps me see things that might go unnoticed. Part of it is really tied to a trust level. The things that I observe are not connected to the appraisal, and I think that has helped to build trust. You need any support right now or looking for development? He established that in the beginning. From then on, when he would come to your room, it's more like a friend, someone you know that's on your side working with you. She's got great classroom management. She has great strategy. She's also confided in me that she does struggle in fractions. Fractions is not one of my strong suits. I can remember my dad always saying, you know, the smartest man is the one who admits he doesn't know everything. They're both half. But are they the same size? I need all the help so I can get equal? so I can better my students. Well, Ms. Olivelle understands that, that nothing else matters other than whether or not her students learn. It ends up being one of her biggest strengths as a teacher. What do you notice? She understands what she doesn't know and is willing to admit what she doesn't know and asks for help and feedback and wants to learn and grow. If Ben comes into my classroom and would like to join in, how much better is that for my kids? We are at a point where I can give that immediate feedback. Model, model, model. I mean, that is a learner. And when you can start honing in on those things and give feedback and adjust, you can see immediate returns for your students. That's where we want to be as a district. Uh, we want a cultural shift to wanting and inviting uh, people coming to the classroom and observing instruction and giving feedback. I learn more from other teachers around me, and I'm always saying, I'm going to borrow that, I'm going to borrow that idea, than, than I learn sometimes from a professional workshop. That's how you continuously improve. You're always looking at the other guys. What are they doing? How are they doing that? And getting very curious about those practices. She believes that when she asks a teacher to meet certain expectations, that now she's going to support the teacher, help the teacher to meet those expectations. River Oaks is near and dear to my heart. I was the principal there for the past two years. These are the kids that are going to the top tier colleges. That kind of high achievement culture can be replicated for all children. I can watch her pacing, how quickly she's able to go through the different objectives. Just any, any advice I can get from her. Sometimes it's not the content they're teaching, but the way that they do it. Well, I can't put a price or you know, quantify how important it is to be able to observe and see great teachers in action. So she was able to come in and see some different ways to teach reading and hopefully we'll be able to put that into practice in her classroom. Ms. Henry ended up emailing me her guided reading lesson plans and the structure that she uses so that the next day I was able to go in there and use that. That's transformation, you know. I didn't expect that I would have open communication with a teacher across town. Well, that helps me but at the end of the day helping those 19 kids that are sitting in their seats. There's that freedom to give and accept feedback and learn and grow. Seeing it in practice and in motion, it's totally doable. I wish I would have seen her sooner. We're trying to take the good, get better, take the bad, and fix it. 
Once you realize that the bottom line is the students, that's what we're in this for, it's okay. The faster we learn to work together, the faster results we'll see with our kids. They're willing to do whatever it takes to improve their craft so that it improves student outcomes. And there's nothing better than that. I mean, when you're, uh, you know, I don't feel me doing it, but I mean, there's nothing better than that. I mean, that's what you want. We're on our way to be able to help more and more children grow and thrive. That's what I want. The future's worth having for everybody.